Thanks a lot for coming in. Good morning. Happy to be here. Something about this community appeals to you? This is a wonderful place to live. <laughs> for Kelowna Now, this is Kent Molgat. And we're joined by Dr. Kathy Keating and Loyal Wooldridge, City Councillor, just to talk a little bit about how we're all digesting some of these incredible things we're going through as a, as a community. Starting with you, Dr. Keating, in your practice, you must be seeing some people who might always deal with anxiety coming in pretty upset with all of this. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly an unprecedented time, and I think that most of us would be feeling a healthy level of anxiety right now, and that's understandable. I think that if you have a pre-existing mental health condition, so you've dealt with anxiety before, or a mood disorder, or something like that, then yeah, I'd expect that your level would be uh, perhaps more elevated. So, is there a way to kind of put into words at what point you should be calling for help on your anxiety level? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important, like I said, that to realize that this anxiety is normal, right? I think we're all feeling a little bit anxious and unsettled with what's developing and we're all continuing to monitor it. But, um, you know, I was saying to you earlier that there's a healthy level of anxiety that motivates us to do these behaviors and hand washing and the sanitization that we're seeing that is recommended by our health professionals now. So that's a good thing, that we're motivated to do those things, to keep everybody as safe as we can. Right. But when it starts to kind of boil over as we see perhaps panic, so those physiological symptoms of anxiety, um, we see a sleep disturbance, or we see irritability, or we see um, a decrease in mood, like those sorts of things. If there's isolation, I mean, I know we're advocating for social distance now, but you can still be socially connected to your family and friends. So if there's a pullback from that, there could be you know, more anxiety or mood issues. So those are the things to maybe watch out for. Right, okay, I wanna get back to some of the things we can do to kind of perk ourselves up a little sure. bit, but I wanna bring loyally and what 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 can community leaders city councils do to kind of set a healthy tone as we make all of these adjustments and how we're living you know I think that we really have to recognize that you know there can be a state of panic and anxiety but we have to remain calm and use that towards planning um, whether you own a business you should have business continuity planning um, and in your household just making sure that you're prepared so that if you do have to self-isolate for 14 days that you're able to do that um, our supply chains are fine as long as people continue to buy in their regular cycles um, as soon as people start to hoard or exhibit Bit signs of extreme shopping there can be challenges there so from a city and municipal perspective you know we're all working very hard every every hour to make sure that we're structuring the city in a way to keep everybody safe while following the directives of the Ministry of Health who is guiding us through this as the situation is honestly changing um, if not daily almost uh, hourly so we've seen a few statements come out from the city from the mayor's office are you are you happy with the tone that's you know, I think that this is uncharted territory for everyone, and it's really about making sure that best practices are being followed through the whole city. So we have enacted the critical response team, which is, you know, senior leadership at City Hall that's monitoring all of our city assets, like our pools and our rec centers, um, and as the directives come down from the province to look at how those are run or closed if need be. I know that I'm a trustee on the library board as well, and ORL did make a decision today to close all of those locations. So as this rolls out, um, it's just knowing that there are really, really competent and smart people working on this, and the main focus is to keep everybody safe. Right. You know, if you were to look at this list of things we can't do, like there go your sports team, there goes your holiday trip, there goes your um, theater, there goes your sports activities. It's just, they're just check, 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 gone, gone, gone. All these things that we would put our focus and our activities into. It, it It's quite a list and it's hard for people, isn't it, Dr. Keating? It is, it's really hard. And I think that we're creatures of habit, right? And so whether it's the hockey game on Saturday night or you know the thing that you do with your family on a Sunday afternoon, perhaps the movies, they're all being kind of taken away and we can understand why that's happening but it's also thinking about you know what what can we do instead right and a lot of people are going to be at home and you know we're fortunate that we live here and the weather is kind of turning and so today it's particularly sunny and it's going to warm up this week so getting outside with your family being active 
Um, exercise is, you know, one of the best kind of managers we have for anxiety and depression and stress. So if that's something that you can continue to do, I know gyms might not be something that we're all going to be headed to uh, in the coming days, but we can be physically active in a lot of right. other ways, right? People seem to be doing that. I, I happen to go to the Knox Mountain Park with mm -hmm. my family and our mm -hmm. dog, and it's like everybody in Kelowna did that. <laughs> it was yeah. it was almost hard to social distance on Knox yeah. Mountain on the weekend. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's a good thing um, that they're getting out there and they're being active. It's really important, though, to think of other things as well. I mean, not everybody can be physically active in the same way, whether there's a physical challenge or limitation or disability. So having social connection, whether you can't meet with somebody, but you can Skype them or you can FaceTime or you can stay in touch by text. Um, you know, there's lots of things that we can think about to focus on our self-care that doesn't involve those regular holiday trips. And, right. And so and it's interesting what you said at the outset that um, these are extraordinary things we're going through mm -hmm. and there is a healthy amount of anxiety. Mm -hmm. We don't need to press the panic button over our anxiety if we're feeling it, right? Absolutely, yeah. But, um, Loyal, uh, do, you, do you feel the anxiety around the council? Table? You know, I think in, as a community in general, you're definitely feeling the anxiety. Um, something that I find comfort in, though, is, you know, it doesn't take much effort to be a good community citizen. And those that are affected most by COVID-19 are the vulnerable and the elderly. So to channel that energy towards helping a neighbor or helping someone else in the community that might not be able to go out and, and stock up in their home, that can be a really great way to calm that anxiety and also give back. Um, right. I think in leadership, you can definitely have that anxiety to propel you forward, but no good decision is made from a, a sense of panic. So it's it's good to realize that anxiety that's there because obviously we're living this, mm -hmm. um, but it has to be channeled in a decision-making way that's based on fact and um, driven by data. There's another positive thing that I encountered today, talking to someone I know who's in the grocery business, and they were saying that they've got lots of customers that are coming in and buying their own groceries and also buying groceries for yeah. an elderly friend or relative. Right. And, and I think also, um, for myself personally, rather than just going to big box stores, there's a lot of local boutique grocery stores and businesses that you can frequent that actually have more social distancing because not many people frequent them. But it's also a great opportunity to support local businesses that will be feeling this the most when the economy does feel the effects of COVID-19. But to shop at those local, um, local grocery stores helps the merchant, but it also helps you with social distancing and it helps fuel our local economy. Right. So um, for people to, um, not that going to see a psychologist is a bad thing, <laughs> but for everybody out there, what, what would you sum up the best way to kind of stay at least mentally healthy while we go through these times of trouble? Yeah, you know, I think that the takeaway is to, um, in these different times, is even if you're home with your kiddos or you're working from home, is to try to set some routine because our routines are disrupted and we're creatures of habit. So to try to establish some routine that's going to maybe be our reality for the next little while. Um, I think one important point I wanted to make was the overconsumption of media. And I think that we get it from all angles and um, you know, going to a reliable source and making sure you're informed, I think that's very, very healthy. But what I'm seeing in my practice is people are being bombarded and being sucked into that. And that actually creates more anxiety. We seek that information out to try to alleviate stress, but we're just overwhelmed with the amount of information. Right. So distancing yourself from that, you know, if you have to be up to date because of your position and you know what, right. what you're doing, that's that's one thing. But for most folks, you know, getting your update about 30 minutes a day, you know, right. would be would be the best. Yeah, sort of check in on where things are at. Make sure you're and informed. Then, mm -hmm. and, you know, you talked about the kiddos. Is is you know if a, if a person you know, with children is getting overly anxious uh, about things, that could be infectious to the family a little bit, right? Setting yeah, it, yeah, definitely setting an example and modeling. I mean, again, I think it's really normal to be anxious. So I think that it can be a normal conversation to say, you know what, this is a really weird time. And being honest with kids in a developmentally appropriate way, I don't think shielding them from all of this is actually super helpful because kids know about 50% more than what we think they know. So yeah. they're getting it from their friends or from their 
you know, schools last week or from their social media, whatever. So I think that having an open dialogue about it, and there are lots of age appropriate resources um, that are available for parents and teaching them how to talk to their kids about these sorts of things. So I actually think that's a very important piece because right. if everyone's able to be open and have a dialogue about it, then um, I think that in and of itself can alleviate anxiety. Right. Loyal, anything you wanted to add before we wrap it up? Yeah, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of accusations and finger pointing that goes on through these processes because someone wants someone to blame. But at the end of the day, we're in this together. And I think that's what's really needs to be recognized as we move forward through these challenging times and turbulent waters is that we're all in this together and everyone's working as hard as they can to address the concerns and, and flatten the curve, curve, if you will, of COVID-19. So just keep that top of mind is that we're all in this together and we're all working to maintain a very healthy community. Fantastic. And we'll wrap up with the hand over the heart and a little nod. That's right. Instead of the handshake <laughs> that I'm breaking an addiction to. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks. And thank you for watching Kelowna Now.